Today on MH News, we're marketing music part 10. Intro's up. Welcome to MH News VLAM, video, lighting, audio, music, and photography, everyone. I'm your host, Matt Haslam. This is part 10 in our 11-part series on marketing music. If you have not seen the previous episodes in this series yet, please go back and watch those first before continuing, as we're going to build on information as we continue in this series. Step 10. Make videos. Lots of videos. A few moments ago, we took an in-depth look at the demographics of our hometown area from Step 7. But what if those demographics didn't even come close to what our target demographic was from our original statement in step one? Some so-called experts believe you need a solid fan base in your hometown area before expanding. And according to them, if you can't find fans locally, you should just give up on music because it would never be a success. While that may have been true before technology came to be, it is certainly the farthest thing from the truth nowadays when many famous artists made their start on sites like YouTube. Such success stories include Justin Bieber. Now, many people don't prefer his music, but regardless of your thoughts on his music, you have to admit his success. Matty B raps and a long list of other artists in every genre of music. Now, I'd like to argue here that not only is making videos a great way to find your audience, if your audience doesn't exist locally, because there's 7 billion people out there, which means if you can't find your audience, it's not their fault you can't find them. But I further that statement and ask what the harm is in finding more of your audience faster. You could spend years building a fan base in your local area, which is all right, but what if there was a way for you to expand your reach without traveling and build your fan base around the world and all you had to do was shoot a video with a $300 camcorder and upload it to YouTube for free? Truthfully, you'd be stupid not to. So how do we go about doing this without spending a lot of money and still come up with a highly creative video people are going to share with their friends and watch over and over again? The first type of music video we can create is a live video. This means that we're going to take a camera to an event we're performing in and record our whole performance. Let's pause for a second here because many musicians do record their performances, but they do it wrong very wrong. There are a couple things to remember when you videotape a live event for the purpose of uploading it later to show your fans. 1. Use a tripod. There are plenty of artists who have one of their family members record the show by just holding a camcorder in their hands, but then you get an awful camera shake, and no one wants to watch a shaky image, even on YouTube. So do yourself a favor and get a tripod. Now, if you don't have a large budget here, you could go the cheap route and get a $30 tripod from a place like Walmart, which will work just fine. But as we're going to explain in a minute here in number three, you may want to get yourself a little better quality of a tripod to help yourself later. The tripods we use for even our much more professional cameras is a tripod called the Magnus VT3000, which you can find on bnhphotovideo.com or amazon.com for just $130, which is very cheap compared to most other professional tripods, which cost thousands. You can also find a review we did on the Magnus VT3000 in the link in the description below. This tripod comes with a fluid head, meaning you can smoothly pan left and right and tilt up and down without getting a very jerky motion. This tripod also allows you to level your image with a built-in level, so you can ensure your image is parallel to the horizon. No one likes an image that's cockeyed. Number two. Concentrate on the audio. Now here's where things can get a little confusing if you're not paying attention. A few minutes ago, we explained how during a live performance, the visual aspect is much more important than the audio aspect of a live show, and it is. However, when it comes to the video world, the exact opposite is true. Yes, as a matter of fact, there have been many studies done by major universities and large companies proving that when it comes to live events, the visual is more important, and when it comes to videos, the audio is more important. So what I suggest doing is getting yourself a good audio recorder, 
and plug it in at your live performance which you are recording. This could be a very simple recorder such as the Zoom H1, which requires you to have a very specific type of cable to connect it to the soundboard of the venue, and it requires that the venue have the correct output type on the mixer in order to accommodate your request. Because of this, I suggest going with the Zoom H4n, which is the most widely used audio recorder in the film industry, and it's the most widely used for this simple reason. It works. Not only will you be able to plug it into any audio console at any venue, but it will record a much higher quality sound for you. And remember, that's what you have to concentrate on when it comes to videotaping your performances, your quality. A Zoom H4n will run you about $200 from BNH Photo Video or Amazon, but it will be the first and the last recorder you will ever need. Whereas you can go the cheap route and buy some $50 or $100 recorder such as a Zoom H1 and need to upgrade later when the higher quality recorder is only $200. It seems like a no brainer. Number three, follow the action. It sounds pretty simple, but it's not as easy as you may think. Now there are many rules in the video world we can elaborate on here, such as the rule of thirds and so on. But when it comes to a live video for performances, it's easiest to keep the performer in the direct center of the screen. In order to keep yourself in the direct center, have a friend or a family member film your performance. There is no more telling aspect of an amateur video than having the performer move left or right on stage and the camera either not pan left or right with him or her, or even worse, have the performer go completely out of frame and not be able to be seen at all by the viewer of the video. So have someone help you by taking the video and follow your movements on stage. This said, you can't just pan the camera left or right, or worse, hold the camera in your hand and turn left or right. You need to pan smoothly, and in order to pan smoothly, you need a good tripod, such as the Magnus VT3000, which we mentioned before in number one. There are only two times when you should ever let the performer get away from the direct center of the screen on your camera. The first of these times is if the performer goes off to either side of the stage to shake an audience member's hand or get close to the audience. If they go off to the side of the stage to get closer to the audience, you want to have the performer off to the side and the audience to the opposite side of the screen. This way it shows the performer on the one side of the screen facing his or her audience who is on the opposite side of the screen. And this type of shot can show the audience reacting to the performer a little better than if the performer was the center screen with an audience on the one side of the screen and nothing behind him or her on the other side. The second time it is acceptable to have the performer off to one of the sides of the screen is if you have multiple cameras. Now one of those cameras should be a wide shot with the performer in the direct center and the other camera is getting close up shots with the performer off to one side of the screen. For this you will need to later edit these together using a video editing program. Most times, just keep the performer in the center of your shot and pan smoothly back and forth as the performer moves on stage. Number four, if you only have one camera, do not, and I repeat, do not zoom in and out. If you have two or more cameras, one should be a wider shot and the other should be the close-up perspective. If you only have one camera though, pick a zoom length and stick with it. Unless you have a $60,000 camera with a very smooth zoom operator mechanism like those that they use in local news shows and the cameras we use for our larger productions, don't try to replicate the effects your camera has no chance of doing well. I have said this for years. The true sign of professionalism isn't knowing what you can do, it's knowing what you cannot do and either hiring the people and the equipment who can do it or working within those limitations of your knowledge and equipment, but doing it so well that no one notices the difference. So if you want a closer shot, zoom in first before recording and then record the whole event in that same perspective of zoom. Just because you have a camera that has a zoom controller doesn't mean it's there for constant use. Number five, synchronize your audio to the video. Now, if you have the world's most highly advanced video editor, Adobe Premiere CC, which costs $240 a year as it is subscription based along with a program called Pluralize 3.0 from a company called Red Giant, a program which costs $200, synchronizing your audio will be really easy. Let's face it though, many musicians won't have these programs, which video editors like myself use daily. 
so how can we sync our audio to the video without these programs? The easiest way I have found to do this task without these programs is a two-step process. One, either before or immediately after your performance, clap your hands together on stage, ensuring the venue's mics pick up your clapping noise, and your camera can do the same. Step two, when you get back to your home, import the audio and the video footage into your computer and use a program called GoPro Studio, which is a free video editor you can find on gopro.com. Then use this clapping noise you made at the event to sync your audio by lining up the audio spikes in the video footage and the same audio spike in the audio footage. Then simply trim your video so your audience doesn't hear that clap and the video just begins with the song. Number six, if you're using your cell phone to record your videos, turn your cell phone into the horizontal position. No one, and I mean no one, likes to watch a video which is higher than it is wide. If you hold your cell phone like you would normally hold it to your ear, that's exactly what you will get, and it's called the portrait video angle. If you hold your cell phone out in front of you and then turn it on its side, this is called the landscape video angle, and you will get a much better image, which your audience will watch over and over. If you'd like to learn more on how to make better video on your cell phone, please find the link in the description below or the card above right now. The second type of video for musicians to utilize is a live studio video. For this, all you need to do is set up a space in your home or office and record from there. Please note, this does not mean it should look like a living room though. If you're a musician or a singer for more than a month or so, you most likely have a corner of a room already taken up by music. So dress up this corner. Make it look like a real video set. You don't need lots of professional video lights just use the lighting in the room, but this space should be a special spot in your house, which you can leave set up so the next video can be done with the same look to the background. If you must do this in your living room or bedroom, face the camera away from the couch or a bed. Don't sit on a couch or a bed. I don't suggest standing for these videos either, but I suggest sitting in a simple bar stool, which you can get at Walmart for $10. Remember, if you're recording these videos by yourself, which is fine, edit out the part where you first start your camera recording. The first 10 seconds of a video is what will judge if an audience person stays to watch the entire video or if they will click away. So if you spend half of this 10 seconds showing yourself starting the camera, recording, and sitting down, certainly most people are going to click away by the time you even start singing. So use a simple editor like GoPro Studio, again it's free, to edit this part of the video out. So as soon as people click onto the video, they start to hear the song. If you want to add an intro to these type of videos, you can. One thing which I like doing is first introducing the song and saying maybe a sentence or two about what the song is about or what inspired me to write the song. What you can do to expand the reach of these videos is add a hashtag. For instance, my live studio videos are all labeled with hashtag MHLounge, which has since become our title for these type of videos. This way your audience can share the videos and connect things like, did you see this week's hashtag MHLounge? And it starts the conversation between you and your fans. For these videos, you are recording audio live with the video so you will again need to synchronize your audio later. The same equipment and steps should be used for these live studio videos as with the live event videos we mentioned a moment ago. The final type of music video is a real music video. The first 10 music videos I did in my career were done with a simple camcorder which cost $200 and my tripod which cost $130. In order to do a professional music video, you will need to record the audio before starting the video. You can follow our suggestions on setting up your own recording studio in your home from earlier in this topic, or you can go to a professional recording studio which will cost you around $600 to $1,000 per song. You can go simple with a professional music video and just show a picture of your album cover you created for that song, using a program like Microsoft PowerPoint or Paint even, and just add the full audio of the song. This is called an audio music video. You can also create a lyric music video by adding tons of graphics, utilizing the lyrics of the song and showing them appear as they are sung in the song. 
but the best music videos are those which show the singer. For this, use your camera and your tripod to record yourself or have someone else record you going through a series of actions while lip singing the lyrics to the song. For this, you will need to have an iPod playing the music so you can correctly lip sync to the song, then sync it up to your audio later. Remember, you will need to have a concept of what your video will show before shooting anything. To give you some examples, here's the theme of some of my past videos. Goodbye friend. The story opens to me walking alongside a beach at sunrise, a beach resembling setting something free, and cuts back and forth to shots of me singing in front of a black backdrop, showing emotion, since the audience sees darkness all around me, and the audience is forced to look right in my eyes. It then cuts to me walking through a graveyard, carrying a bouquet of flowers, to a certain gravestone. I then place that bouquet on the gravestone and walk away, which is showing the audience that I left a part of me with that person buried there. It ends with me breaking down, crying and holding my head, in front of a statue. The statue which towers over me shows how small I am in comparison to the world, which in video, showing how small the actor is to the environment, is a sign of weakness. Sorry I wrote you a song. We follow me singing a breakup song alongside a snow-fallen road, carrying a side bag, which we don't find out what's inside that bag until the final shot of the video. We chose to film with fresh fallen snow because the person I wrote the song for loves snow. So if you find something you can incorporate into a video which hints at what or who you wrote the song for, use it. As a matter of fact, I have incorporated at least one hint in every video I have ever published. At the end of the video, I walk up to a white house with a large front yard and leave a note with the lyrics of the song written on it. So our theme of this video was as simple as me walking in the snow to her house to leave a note I wrote to tell her that the only thing I was sorry for was writing her a song. In order to film this video, we knew to do it safely, we would need to shut down the entire road so we weren't hit by passing cars, but this was way over our budget. Well, one snow-filled morning, this road was shut down by the local police for ice conditions, so we walked the entire road to film this whole video within eight hours before the road was reopened. It didn't cost us anything because it was shut down for other reasons and not just for us, but we were able to do it safely, so sometimes you need to utilize what happens around you to get things done. You should always keep your safety and the safety of your friends and crew members as your top priority. Haunted. The entire time of this video, we follow me walking and running through a forest. In reality, it was actually three different forests edited together, ducking behind trees and bunkers, hiding from something, a demon if you will, which we never actually see. Notice, we never show what's actually chasing me because it saves us from having props or another actor, saving budget. But you can see I'm running from something. This is all told through the perspective of high camera angles, which were edited to make them look like security camera footage. Through the video, we wanted to show a vibrant green forest, which would turn to burned and charred, because the story of the lyrics is a dream turned to a nightmare. We filmed the vibrant green forest in midsummer, and short of starting a forest fire, which was out of the question, we had no idea of how to get the burn look and stay on budget. Fortunately for us, not so much the forest, a section of the forest was burned by some teenagers having a bush party. The next day, we filmed everything we needed to end the video, just proving sometimes you have to take advantage of the opportunities in front of you. At the end, it shows that I finally found a way out of the forest and zooms into a bedroom where I wake up from a nightmare. That was spooky. For those who think music videos are expensive, let me rest your mind. My first 10 music videos, including these three mentioned above, three of my most popular on my Madhousen Vivo channel on YouTube, only cost me $100 if you exclude the $200 camera and the $130 tripod we already had. The only expenses came in the bouquet of flowers, which was $5 the hotel room we had to stay over in Atlantic City, New Jersey, in order to get the beach early enough to capture the sunrise at 6 a.m. that day, which was $90, and some gas. If you want a more professional video, you can go to a more professional video company like MHP, but I only suggest that 
if you have the fan base already. If you're just starting out, try some things on your own first, just so when you're on set with a professional company one day, you're not spending your whole day learning on how to do things and wasting your own money and getting some on-set experience. Plus, it saves you lots of money when you're just starting out. When you publish your videos on sites like YouTube, they offer you a way to add key search words, so utilize this. Rather than putting your own name in the box or the name of your song, use three but no more than ten items in this box. If you add more than ten, YouTube won't really care about your video, according to their algorithms, which recommend videos to others. Go back to step one and use the three artists you sound most alike and add their names first in this box. Then add your genre of music you play, and finally fill in a few more artists which perform songs of a similar style to the song in the video you were uploading. This way, when people are watching videos by other artists, YouTube's algorithm is more likely to recommend your video. If you want to upload videos to Facebook, don't. If you want to share music video with your fans on Facebook, copy and paste the URL of the video on YouTube into your post on Facebook. Remember, the audio quality matters when it comes to the videos, and Facebook has far from perfected their audio issues. Even the video quality on Facebook still sucks, so if you want people to appreciate your work and your art, upload to YouTube first and post the link on YouTube, that way people can watch the video with a much better audio quality and much better video quality. This said, we cannot copy and paste songs on YouTube either. For instance, many artists who record cover songs or who don't write their own original songs think that you can just record yourself singing someone else's song and upload it. While it's true that I guess you could do this, your video will also be blocked for copyright infringement and people will be able to see you, but they won't be able to hear any audio. Your video will in sense be muted. For some artists who record cover songs for their albums, you need to pay for the rights to use someone else's song on your album, and you prepay for these rights through CD Baby, because that's how the copyright law works. But even if you pay these rights to use a song on your album, you cannot use the same song on your video. In fact, the only time you can use a cover song in a video even if it's your own version of that song, is if you contact the songwriter directly and ask him or her permission to use it in such purposes. When it comes to using a cover song on an album, these rights are regulated by groups like ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC to a certain dollar amount per copy you intend to sell. But when it comes to a video, these songwriters can set their own pricing, so you can end up having a songwriter allow you to record the song for free because it's a lesser known songwriter or you can end up paying thousands for a more popular song. It all depends on the songwriter. This is why you see the YouTube channels being suspended or shut down entirely of artists who only perform cover songs. Generally, they record right after the song originally debuts from the original artist, hoping to catch some of the people looking for the original version. Many times, this results in major lawsuits, so just do yourself a favor and either get their rights or only record original content.